Hello everyone, and welcome back to One Soccer. I am your host for today, Josh Deming. I am joined by my colleague, Alex Gonge ruzik and a special guest, Luca Petrasso. Very excited to ask Luca 10 valuable questions today, and we're just gonna start the first one very nice and light. Luca, you had a move to Orlando in November. Uh, wanna tell us a little bit about how that move maybe came about, and if you were surprised that it actually happened? Um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was definitely a little bit surprising. Um, I didn't uh, know anything about it going into it, so kind of just happened one day where I got a call from my agent just saying that I was traded and then I didn't know much about the details until later on it was it was um, published and stuff but um, yeah it was it was definitely uh, in the off season and it was a little bit of a nervous for me and my family since I was at the club for a long time at TFC so um, kind of when it all happened it was a bit of a shock but um, I was definitely excited for it, definitely excited for a new challenge, somewhere where I can get out of my comfort zone and, and continue to play and strive and, and push to the next step and get the consistent minutes that I've always wanted to do each season and to play. So um, definitely I was excited about it for sure. And we, we got, got, got to know that the weather's, you know, just a, a touch warmer down in Orlando. Yes, yes it's, it's been very warm, very hot since I came here in January. So, and I've seen a lot of, a lot of snow and, and, and snowstorms in Toronto back at home. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a bit snowy over here, but <laughs> obviously you grew up in that and you, you joined the yeah. TFC Academy when you were 12. So, I mean, what was it kind of like joining an, you know, an academy system at that age and then, you know, eventually making your way up through the, the, the academy ranks, then to the first team, especially since it was your hometown club? Um, that was amazing. When I was with TFC Academy, um, I think it was everything that um, I thought it would be with the, the relationships I made, the friendships I made, the players that I played with. Um, that I grew up playing since I was 12 and all the way in with the second team and the first team. Um, yeah, the academy was, was very good. I had great coaches there, um, especially Danny Dekio was somebody that kind of took me under his wing and, and made me into the player and person I am today. And um, I'm definitely always in touch with him. So, uh, but then as I moved forward, I went into the second team and was there for around three, three years. And then um, obviously I got the opportunity to sign for the first team last season. Uh, when Bob Bradley came in and and uh, it was definitely for me a, a year where I didn't expect to play as much as I did and going into it I never thought that I would have that opportunity especially at TFC and a very big club with a lot of big players so um, when I got that chance to make my debut and I kind of just rolled with it and played in, in, in a good stretch of games until obviously Crescito came in but um, TFC is an amazing club to be at with a lot of family a lot of a lot of friendships that I made there growing up now, you weren't always a left back. Do you want to tell us a little bit when you actually kind of adjusted to become a left back and how that process came about? Yeah, um, I was more, well, in the younger days in the academy, I was more of kind of like a, a, a winger or, or an eighth attacking mid. And then um, I think as I came into the second team and, and the way uh, the, the club was moving, they kind of saw me as a, as a fullback and uh, more of an attacking fullback, obviously. So when Greg Vanny was still at the club, he kind of transitioned me into that left back position or left wing back position and then and once he ended up leaving the club I kind of stayed at that role and, and felt that the club felt that was probably the best way for me to make it to the first team so um, I kind of continued that position and just kind of grew into it and then now I, I, I play obviously as a wing back or, or or sometimes even last year I played as a winger so definitely anywhere on the left side. It, it's interesting to see though because a lot of like I hear, hear stories from a lot of left footed players that are obviously starting as wingers and because lefties is just a, a, a unique way to play the game. They end up kind of tr transitioning back. So I was kind of curious, I guess that sounds like how your, your story yeah. kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, obviously with the, the, the wingers that were at TFC, it's, it's yeah. a, a very high level. So <laughs> maybe, maybe obviously they're going to rely on a lot of, a lot of the big players in the DPs to get the goals and the assists. So I think me transitioning into that position uh, is definitely more beneficial for me. All right, I guess, Luca, just speaking to your left foot, obviously last year you made your MLS debut at home against the New York Red Bulls, and your left foot came in pretty handy. You delivered a pretty awesome assist. I mean, obviously the game didn't go as you wanted score-wise, but what was it like just getting uh, you know, a moment like that at home? Were there any friends and family in attendance? What was that all like? Uh, that, that, that moment was definitely very special for me. That week leading up to it was, uh, uh, it was kind of crazy because I think mid – midweek in training I kind of knew that they gave me the penny where I was going to be on the starting lineup when we were doing 11v11 I was just thinking to myself there's no way he's going to start me in my first game at home um, and it was in a big game so 
uh, definitely me, my family uh, were in the stands, my girlfriend and her family. And then I had a bunch of friends obviously wanted to come and watch me play. Uh, so it was definitely a crazy experience for me. And then when the game started, I was definitely very nervous going into it. I didn't know what, what was going to happen or, or what to think. Um, but the atmosphere was amazing. Um, it was definitely a dream to play at home at BMO Field in front of my friends and family. So obviously the game didn't go to plan, but like, like you said, I came out and just wanted to express myself and, and be confident and definitely thought I showed that with an assist. And then a couple of times I'm able to dribble out players and take people on uh, was definitely something that I wanted to do. And I knew in that game I had to I had to create something, do something to continue to keep playing uh, for TSC throughout the year. So um, it was definitely a special moment for me. And on to the question I'm very excited to ask, but as someone of Italian heritage, what was it like when Insigne and Bernadeschi joined? There's your two Euro winners, two very talented players. And what was that experience like just playing with them? That, that was amazing. When I saw the news of them uh, coming to the club and or them rumored to the club, I was like, I didn't believe that it was going to happen. And then when you watch the Euros and you watch them every game and then they end up winning the Euros, um, it was incredible, and especially in Toronto. It's, it's a very Italian, multicultural place. So... We knew that when they were going to come to the club, the, the stands would be the stands would be packed again. It would be thirty thousand people. Um, so when they were coming, it was cool. The first, I think, the first time we met them um, was I think we were, we were playing a game that night, and I think he was he flew in. I think maybe that morning or whatever, and then he came towards us or in the in the change room, maybe 20, 30 minutes before the game started, just said hi to us, introduced himself, and it was like wow, like a player like that is in the same change room as me. And, and then as we continued the season, I was able to play with them and train with them. And it's just see from obviously a fan perspective, but a player perspective just to see how they, they take care of themselves on and off the field and the, the attention to detail when they come from the highest level at Napoli and Juventus um, was amazing. And then for me, honestly, uh, Crescito when he came was definitely uh, special for me because he played in my, my position and someone that, um, I was able to look up to for those six months and, and see what I could do to improve my game. And for him, I thought he was unbelievable. I thought he was an amazing player, so calm and, and, and like corrected on the ball and passing was amazing. So um, he was an amazing person on and off the field. But to have those guys that, uh, with me, especially in my first year in MLS and, and to gain that experience from them was amazing. And I guess, Luca, I mean, you mentioned you obviously followed the, the Euro run. Just two fun questions on that one. Where did you watch it? Was it, were you in Little Italy for those games? And also, how's your Italian? Were you able to, to practice with them? Um, for those games, I, I most, well, usually a lot of the, the Italian fans watch it in, in Woodbridge, a place called Market Lane, where like a lot of the Italian people in that community would go and watch. But um, I watched it at home with my family, um, uh, which was pretty nice. But my Italian is definitely not very good. My my dad speaks it a little bit, and his parents are from Italy, so I try and pick it up from them. But uh, when I had Peruzzo with me last year, he's my best friend of the team. He speaks full Italian, so I was trying to trying to hang out with him because he was close with the Italians <laughs> and try and pick it up from them. But uh, I, at that point last year, I was I was even downloading the app Duolingo to try and learn it to see if I could uh, just catch on a little bit, but. Um, no, it was it was a cool experience for me last year. And you kind of mentioned it there as well, how Crescito was obviously someone that he had a chance to work with and just learn from. Were there any other TFC teammates that maybe you really had a chance to, that, that you know, maybe took you under the wing? Obviously, someone like Jonathan Zorio has been around at the club for a long time. Were there any guys like that who just really helped you adjust as a professional and, and figure out the, the game in that first year? Yeah, for sure. Um, Michael Bradley was definitely one of them. Um, when I was training with the second team before I was with the first team, he was someone that kind of felt that he really liked me as a player. And and uh, when uh, when Bob Bradley came in to be the coaching staff and also Paul Stolteri, which I had him as my Canadian under-17 coach, um, uh, it was good for me, people that I was kind of familiar with and, and, and knew the kind of style of play that we were going to play. So... Um, definitely Michael Bradley was someone that I looked up to and, and took care of me on and off the field. Definitely Jonathan Osorio, uh, a legend for the club. So someone that I looked up to growing up in the academy, watching him um, every week was definitely someone that uh, I wanted to be and, and wanted to achieve the same, same kind of stuff that he did on the field. And, and to make my debut was something that was exciting for me. Um, and then players that I, I look up to and, and try to, to play at, at TFC, definitely Richie Larea is someone that kind of catches my eye when, when you watch him play, he's amazing going forward. Um, and just like the athleticism and attributes to get into the box and create danger, and create assists and 
fun opportunity. It's something that I like to watch. So uh, definitely him. And he obviously played at Orlando and, and someone that I kind of spoke to just before coming into here. And obviously now he still reaches out to me to see how I'm doing here. So um, there's definitely a lot of good guys at TFC that, that I definitely keep in touch with. Now you start. You started in and won the 2020 Canadian Championship. What was it like playing with a lot of your homegrown teammates? How special was it winning that trophy with those guys? Oh, it was, it was amazing. Um, uh, like I said, me and Perutza, we grew up together for so many years playing at Woodbridge uh, Soccer Club together, and and uh, I speak to him I think almost every day. So when we we played in that game together um, and we won it together, which was very nice, and that was that was my first. Uh, I guess that was my first year last year at TFC, so first trophy with them and kind of my first big game with them, I would say, um, or big game in my career was a final, so um, I was excited for that. Um, I played with a lot of players growing up. Jaden, I played with in the second team, Nelson, and Ralph Prizo, um, Noble Akello. I grew up playing with them throughout uh, six, seven, eight years. Um, Rocco Romeo, who now plays in the CPL for Vancouver, so there were so many players that I grew up playing with. Um, that club and it was just more like it was it was more easier and just to be myself around them and to have them on the field with me it was just easier to connect and create those relationships and uh it was amazing to have them throughout throughout my time at tfc and obviously now with orlando you had the chance to already to play some pretty huge games the champions league i mean what was that just whole tie like being against tigress a team that i guess if just a few years ago went up against Bayern and almost beat them in a, in a world cup final and i guess secondly also what was it like playing at el volcan in particular because i had a chance to visit and it was one of my favorite stadiums what was it like playing yeah. on there that was definitely my the i would say the best atmosphere i've ever played in away game wise was that, that stadium was incredible uh even when we were going out to warm-ups it was like packed and they were just chanting at us, booing us. Um, it was just like a hostile environment, even with the team bus going into the place. Um, it was amazing. I was so excited for that game. Uh, definitely a bit nervous because uh, Tigas is an amazing team and one of the biggest, biggest teams in, in their country and, and in the region. So it was amazing to play against those players. And then definitely we showed that we can compete at that level. And and um, it was it was amazing, and then when we came back home and played at them, they had a huge supporter section in our in our stadium, uh, which was crazy. Uh, it kind of almost felt like it was a home game for them of how loud they were at our, at our stadium. But uh, it was amazing uh, play it play in that competition, play at that level, and to test myself and to see that I can compete at that level and to still do the job offensively, defensively, and, and just show myself and not kind of back down to to those players. So um, it was definitely a great experience for me. Yeah, over those two legs, like you guys went toe to toe with Tigres, it was a really fun watch. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see because I mean, obviously playing at his left back now, who do you model your game after? And was there anyone that you admired as a youngster that kind of helped base how you play now as a left back, or did you maybe model yourself over a, as a winger when you were a little bit younger? But I just want to know, like, when you're looking at like the because you said you're attack minded left back, is there any left backs out there that that you really look at and you're like, yes, I want to play like that? Yes, for sure. Um... Definitely a big fan of Theo Hernandez at UC Milan. Um, someone that uh, I watch and look up to in his attacking style of play is incredible. Up and down the field for 90 minutes and so strong and so direct. Um, Cancelo, I watch a lot of, um, able to play both sides. But able the way to players that are able to just take on players, get into the attack, put balls into the box and create danger, um, that that's just a player that I want to be, a player that I, I, I want to do when I'm on the field. And and at Orlando, I definitely have that freedom sometimes to go forward and, and create danger, but obviously to be uh, more concerned about my defensive abilities each game. But as a player like me, I, I want to go forward. I want to take players on. So those two, Theo Hernandez, Cancelo. Obviously, I watch Alfonso Davies a lot, but uh, definitely yeah. his, his pace is at a different a different level. So. <laughs> <laughs> but any any of those left sided players I look up to, uh, but for sure Theo Hernandez is one that I, I admire. And of course Luca. I mean, there's a chance you also had the uh, the chance to admire another professional fullback in your family as well. Of course, your older brother Michael uh, becoming a professional. Um, you know, how is that having a fellow pro in your you know in your family as you were growing up? Obviously, Michael had that chance to go to England and, and cut his teeth at some pretty awesome clubs, play for the national team. You know, obviously still playing today as a professional at a high level. What was it kind of like having them there? What were some conversations you had as he had through those those journeys he went through? 
um, it's amazing to have him now because now I'm able to um, obviously watch him play. But when I was younger, I, I would uh, watch him play at the highest level in England, like you said, and he was at Montreal Impact for a bit. And then now that he sees me growing up and, and playing at a high level, now he's able to give me the tips and, and the stuff to, to continue at that level. And he always talks to me every day, calls me every day. Uh, just to make sure I'm doing well as a, as a player, but always most importantly as a person, just to obviously it's my first time moving away and, and he's had that experience already when he moved away to England at a young age. So um, just good to have that, to keep in touch with me. But uh, he's definitely the, the, the one person in my life that I look up to as a player and as a person um, since knowing him and, and having him by my side and, and him playing at the highest level, he's able to just to, just to give me the ins and outs of it to compete. But, Obviously, knowing soccer, it's up and down. It's a roller coaster, so it's kind of just to, to maintain that that level, that level headed, and just to enjoy the process. So um, it's amazing to have him, and I'll be definitely supporting York United this year. After I saw their their jerseys with the, the logo, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, those are clean. Those are clean jerseys. I def- definitely agree with that. I might have to pick one up myself. I have a little little York <laughs> shirt hanging there, but I think that could use yeah. a little update right there. But Luca, we have uh, one final question for you today, and it's one I'm also very excited to ask you. Uh, tell me a little bit about your ambitions for wanting to play for the Canadian national team. What would it potentially mean to you? And has there been any type of conversations leading up for these next big stretch towards like the, the Gold Cup? Copa America and then of course pushing for the World Cup in 2026. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely a big goal of mine and um, I definitely think it's achievable for me um, just to, if I can continue to play at a consistent level in the MLS and, and continue to grow and and I think I'll get my opportunity to get called into a camp. Hopefully, hopefully it comes soon, but um, that would be a dream of mine. I, I, there's times where I just think about it going into camp and playing with the players that are there right now like Jonathan David, Kyle Lahren. Uh, like Alfonso Davies, it, it would be amazing to, to see myself with those players and, and to test myself against them. So um, it's definitely possible. I've seen uh, players that come from Toronto and Alistair Johnson, Kamal Miller, and players that came in, worked hard, and, and pushed themselves through it, and they get an opportunity to play there. And, and you just gotta just gotta make your mark when you get that chance. So. Hopefully it comes soon, and I'm definitely looking forward to it when it does. Yep. No, I'm 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 thinking that there could be a call potentially in your future. You're doing incredible stuff right now at the Major League Soccer level, and I'm excited to see the way the rest of the season goes. But Luke, I really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, best of luck for the rest of the season, and yeah, it was it was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me.